Anyway, today is the sixth day of the first lunar calendar of the uh, uh, very auspicious month of miracles. So, therefore, it's very auspicious that you have given your uh, uh, time to receive this empowerment and maybe uh, we can encourage you to take part in recitation of the mantra and uh, then dedicate this for uh, for the long life of <coughs> His Holiness Sakya Gongma Trichen and as well as long life of all the teachers and allaying of the sufferings in the world. So therefore it's very uh, inspiring for Sakya friends who had this vision to ask us to do this. So I'm very fortunate to uh, be able to be part of this by conducting this empowerment uh, ceremony. So with this in mind, uh, we should all stay very present and have not just an evening of a couple of hours together, but many months we will be reciting the Om Mani Padme Hung. Om Mani Padme Hung is the most sacred quintessence of all the Buddha's teachings. And later on in the second half of this uh, session, I uh, will do a teaching on the sadhana practice. Welcome back everyone. Now I'm going to give a short uh, teaching on the uh, union of great compassion, Ma Karuna, and uh, uh, great right view, Ma Mudra, uh, which is the combined practice of this compassion and wisdom, like the method and wisdom, uh, carefully combined in this uh, uh, Avalokiteshvara sadhana. Um, so this little background of this Avalokiteshvara practice is can be learned from the lineage list of the lineage gurus. So um, the best time for you to practice Avalokiteshvara <clears throat> is any time really, preferably. Uh, a time before you have eaten any meat or uh, such uh, unfavorable um, product of eat, eat drinks and so on. Uh, anyway, so you you should uh, practice at a time and place that suits you best. But most importantly, you should do it as a daily practice if possible. If not, you can do periodically. Um, if you can contribute the mantra like it has been recommended, then from now onwards until Shunkot Tuchen would be very beneficial. For us to have a continuity of practice that is not broken makes the lineage and the tantric practice unbroken. Cont tantra means continuum. So we need to continuously in a big uh, influence our mind stream by the practice. Um, so whether you can do the full length sadhana or just uh, uh, take refuge and generate bodhicitta and then just recite the Om Mani Padme Hung, that is also possible. But here we're going to go over the uh, format of the sadhana. Um, so um, firstly you visualize um, yourself being in the land of Sukhavati and then um, with a mixture of four uh, common foundation of the thoughts. That is the shortcomings of samsara. So you need to have a touch of renunciation from samsara and the cause of samsara which is greed, hate and ignorance which is the afflictions and cause of the affliction is the wrong view of um, grasping to the body and the name and the things like this as self. So not realizing these beings become afflicted and then create karma and their sufferings. So you have to have a strong sense of a renunciation mind to turn away from this. And the second is that you need to rejoice uh, your uh, precious human rebirth and we should uh, be resolute to uh, and make a, a, appreciate your karma and the dharma in your life and be resolute to put the human rebirth into good use. 
without letting it go become wasted. Uh, so that's the second common foundation to to rejoicingly make a vow to make use of this life in spite of how awful samsara is from which we are under to renounce. And the third is you need to always remember things, the law of impermanence and the inevitability of death and uh, and the danger of dying any time and nothing helps during life and death except the holy dharma. So with this in mind you need to reflect uh, the reason to diligently practice the dharma by meditating on impermanent death. Then the fourth and last is in spite of the death and uh, in so, uh, impermanent life, but your karma that you create will follow you like a shadow of a flying bird. So you cannot leave karma behind, it will follow and ripen on yourself sooner or later. Hence, I must take refuge in the triple gem and follow the way of the Buddha. So that whatever imprints we leave on the mind streams, um, be they are, uh, let them be wholesome, virtuous karma. So with these uh, four common foundations, then you should uh, be res very resolute and determined to practice Dharma with the diligence. Um, and then, but practice Dharma also, you do it for the benefit of all sentient beings. In order to benefit all sentient beings, you need to receive blessings of the lineage gurus. And hence you start with the visualizing on top of your crown, the lineage guru in the form of Buddha Amitabha. You visualize the root and the lineage gurus all embodied by Guru Amitabha. And that's why it says, upon a lotus on my head sits my precious root guru. Uh, so you visualize your guru, not some individual teacher. Uh, you should never visualize an individual teacher. You should visualize all the teachers and without excluding anyone with whom we have made even smallest connection in this life, all those teachers who have from 5th century, 3rd century, up, up to all of those teachers are embodied in the form of Amitabha. And uh, so you should therefore visualize him in the form of Amitabha and then uh, ask for his blessings, kindness. So as your body sits still, it says body bless. Your body is blessed means you should not get up and down and you know, being restless, you should sit there and do the uh, practitioner as a blessed practitioner's body. Blessed practitioner's speech is that he is happily singing, chanting the prayer and without being distracted. Blessed mind is the mind is uh, filled with the devotion and refuge and bodhicitta and compassion of all sentient beings and right view. So with this you are praying. Um, that may you be able to stay like this throughout the whole session. So that's very succinctly put in the in the first verse. And then you are you are calling upon, inviting all the root lineage gurus one by one, the fully enlightened one, all knowing, triumphant one is Shakyamuni Buddha, you know, and um, and Shakyamuni Buddha, an inseparable form of that who regards all sentient beings as his own child towards all sentient beings and whose love and compassion is steadfast towards all sentient beings, thus manifesting wonderful deeds to benefit sentient beings, is none other than Avalokiteshvara. So, therefore, you visualize on top of your, your crown embodiment of the, all of that in the form of Amitabha, and then it lists the names of the teacher, the Holy Shakya King refers to Shakyamuni Buddha, our skillful guide, Dralinamjal is Jetari, the Indian master, and Dorji Dempa is a Tibetan translation of Vajrasanapada, um, the senior one, and then, 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 uh, so after those two, gen two Indian teachers, then Parilotsawa, Pari Lotsawa is the first Tibetan monk who went to India and then brought these teachings. And from then onwards, it lists all the lineage gurus, which we won't go into detail. Sachin and Sonam Tsemo and Jitsun Trakpa, all the way. So if you go down uh, about them, uh, halfway through the page, it's, uh, it's finished off with the Shempe Nyingpo. 
Shempenyingbo uh, is the, the, the teacher of His Holiness Sakya Kongma Trichen and His Eminence Choge Trichen Rinpoche. And uh, so they, uh, they, they, they receive empowerment from him and he's the most current lineage holders. Uh, and so then the second half of that page is actually reviewing the whole practice of Avalokiteshvara. Uh, so it says, O oh, wondrous lotus holding one, all compassion and single body. So the, all compassionate Buddhas embodied in the form of a one a holy body that is a holding lotus is a Padmapani. A Padmapani means Padma means lotus, Padmapani means in the hand, lotus in the hand. So that's a synonym of Avalokiteshvara, uh, <clears throat> who's holding a lotus in, the, in his hand and, um, and uh, who is embodiment of all the compassion. He represents all the lineage gurus and uh, all founding masters of our line, mean lineage gurus, uh, please hear our prayers that we direct to you. So you're calling upon Amitabha and Avalokiteshvara, who is inseparable. And uh, so then it, it goes down to list the summary of what is the rest main, main practice constitute. By the blessings of this prayer, grant us uh, help from uh, friends and future rebirths. So this is a prayer uh, prayer to be to that we not only get receive help in this life but also in the bardo and then later on uh, and uh, so that we we become um, uh, free from the we become liberated from the uh, samsara and reach a per perfect enlightenment how is the perfect enlightenment achieved it says born of the two accumulation the two accumulation refers to the accumulation of merit and accumulation of wisdom. This accumulation of merit gives birth to Rupakaya, and accumulation of wisdom gives to Dharmakaya. So that's what's born of the two accomplishment refers to that. Seen, but seen, see the visible form of Avalokitesha is the Rupakaya, and uh, the empty nature, which is Dharmakaya, seen but empty means the empty is the, the Dharmakaya aspect of it. Uh, but seen aspect is the Rupakaya. Rupakaya is made out of accumulation merit. Dharmakaya is made out of accumulation wisdom. Uh, uh, therefore, the appearance of Avalokiteshvara is uh, like a moon in the water. You know, moon looks like in the water, but moon is never in the water. Likewise, the appearance of Avalokiteshvara is so real, but it's not real tangible at all. So it's a, the clear and empty form of Avalokiteshvara is a, is a reminder for us to know all things are not as they seem, as they appear. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, the protector Amitabha, the Lord of Amitabha means boundless light, mm, uh, fill our hearts with your nectar of blessings. So one is supplicating to bless one's mind stream. And then later on, when you do the practice of yourself in the form of ultimately, uh, then may and may we, re, may we always hold the view. Now, this is talking about the view of Mahamudra. May we always meditate and hold the right view in the Mahamudra that our mind is the root of all things. Our mind is the root of samsara, our mind is the root of sadness, our mind is the root of joy. So, therefore, our mind is the root of all dharma. Dharma here means the phenomena. And so reality does not begin, means give birth. Dwell means duration. Cease means cessation. So rising, abiding, cessation, all these concepts. They, they, in reality does not have arising, abiding, cessation. Real, reality is free of that. Beyond extremes, beyond all extremes of eternalism and nihilism, and telling means beyond expression. You know, there's no way that we can explain what it is. It is beyond expression. It's inexpressible. That's the nature of Mahamudra. Nature of the mind is inexpressible, really. That's why you, you meditate uh, when you understand the nature of your mind. So in, order, in that state of mind, then we have to recite the mantra. From the round, he within our hearts. So when we recite the Om Mani Pemo later on, 
When in that, that state of meditation, you visualize the silver tree in your heart, surrounded by Om Mani Padme Hum, light shines forth. So light means the sixth syllable, uh, Om Mani Padme Hum, shines rays of light and worship the enlightened ones and rescue the ordinary sentient beings. So there are just two things. Returning then to bless our minds. Exactly. The rays of light goes to honor the enlightened ones. Then rays of light return back to our heart and bless our mind stream. So this yoga of non-dual sound and voidness, because now sounds, sound and voidness and form and voidness and, and all of that is the nature of meaning of uh, emptiness in form, because sound is emptiness. Sound is audible, but it's empty, isn't it? Likewise, form is a visible, but is empty of true existence, like the moon and the water. So, therefore, non-duality of the sound and voidness, or form and emptiness, same, form and emptiness. Uh, thus, may we vis always visualize Amitabha on a throne above us. So, you always visualize Amitabha on top of her when you're doing this lineage guru prayer. And uh, so, why you should do that is so that we can see all phenomena as none other than the holy body of the Amitabha and Avalokiteshvara. Hear all sound as a mantra and think all our thoughts are wisdom. So this is talking post meditation we may, we may be able to contact with this. And thus, may all the merit that is accrued from doing these practices, uh, may we attend speedily attain enlightenment, uh, and enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, and uh, then so that we will able to pluck all sentient beings from the stormy seas of samsara, so that they all all sort of snatch away from the ocean of samsara, rescued, and they may they all reach the uh, stage of Avalokitesha. So this lineage guru prayer is written by Jamian Kenza Wangpo, uh, and so so that's that's what that's what you have. You chant that. This this translation is done in meter version. So. Usually they have a set kind of a ch tune. I think Deshung Rinpoche, the late Deshung Rinpoche, when he first gave this empowerment in Singapore, uh, taught a tune, you know. We, we do the, that very tune here. Um, so uh, that can be done uh, if you do the practice. Uh, so that's the, just the lineage guru prayer. And now the main practice itself is uh, firstly refuge. Uh, so you visualize, now that you have visualized Amitabha, visualize the merit field in front of you is uh, Amitabha is the presiding Buddha. He's the Dharma, he's the Sangha, he's the Yidam, he's the deities, he's, he's embodiment of all refuge. So you can visualize just Amitabha and take refuge. That's called all combined jewel tradition. You realize Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, all are in the Buddha, all the Amitabha. Why? Amitabha's form is Sangha. His speech is the Dharma. His mind is the Buddha. So therefore, Amitabha is the embodiment of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So you visualize him in the space before, and then you, together with all sentient beings, take refuge with three things. Fear of samsara and selfishness, faith in the qualities of Buddha's uh, triple gem, qualities of compassion, wisdom, and power, and then compassion towards all sentient beings who are languishing in so samsara. With that in mind, then you uh, take a refuge. So that's a refuge prayer, yeah? So I won't need to go on a refuge prayer. That's a fairly, fairly explanatory until enlightenment reaches. So that's my refuges, not from now until as long as I live, but until the sense of enlightenment reached. So from the time point of view, it is very, very long. And the number point of view is I and all sentient beings who are limitless are taking refuge. And um, so you take a refuge. With this in mind, you recite the refuge in the triple gem. So you recite that on this right column. Uh, uh, those those uh, re refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, and Guru. Uh, you can recite that at least three times. The, the right left column you don't need to repeat three times, you repeat just once. And then, but you need to feel that in the space before you is, a, is Amitabha who, is, who represents all the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So that's all combined jewel tradition. 
if you visualize all the rooted lineage gurus in the form of Amitabha, as well as the Buddhas on the right, Yidams in the front, scriptures on the back, Sanghas on the left, if you do that, that's like a marketplace, like gathering, gathering of all the lineage, lineage objects, objects refuge on the tower tree. So that's a true ver two ways of doing it. All combined, simple version of Amitabha embodying all refuge objects, or you visualize every one of them like a gathering at the market's palace. In any case, you need to say the refuge prayer like a meditation. You say verbally, you do it, you know it, you feel it, and without any distraction or dullness, like a meditative chanting. And yeah, meditative, using the chanting as a guided meditation so that you stay very present, one pointedly on the qualities of the Buddha, Dharma Sangha, which instills faith and joy and devotion. When you think about the plight of samsara, every sentient being is languishing in their own self-made sorrows, so you feel very pitiful and compassionate. And uh, so with this mixture of fear in the samsara, faith in the Dharma, compassion to sentient beings, you recite the refuge prayer. After you have done the refuge prayer, uh, then you do the supplication of prayer. Supplication here is, O oh, peerless guru and triple gem, to you I bow down and take refuge. So that's the summation. May you bless my body, voice, mind. What is it like to be body blessed? Body being blessed is changed. Speech changed. Mind changed. And those of each and every, every being. So we visualize, after taking refuge, we visualize all sentient beings who you have some friends who are very close to you, whose well-being is a really primary concern of you, whose suffering is also a great cause of sadness to you. So you be inclusively think of each of them being blessed. Because people usually ask people each other to, can you please think of me? And we say, yes, but when do you think of them? It is that. When you take refuge, you should think of all those people with whom you are very closely connected, as well as those who are remotely connected, all of them, they say you're taking refuge. Then imagine the, uh, as in response to you taking refuge, you know, uh, and you're making supplication to all the Buddhas. Bless my mind stream to turn to the Dharma. Yeah, most people's mind is not turning to Dharma. They're turning to drama. They're turning to reactions and overreactions. But here you pray, so may sentient beings turn to Dharma, turn to the Buddha. Bless me to turn, reach the path of Dharma. But people turn to Dharma, but Dharma, they turn to Dharma only temporarily as if someone will save them. And uh, they themselves do not want to practice. So that's why a lot of people do not reach the path of Dharma. They, 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 they're expecting some savior from outside to save them. No, no. The reaching the path of Dharma is that you stay very steady and and un, un relentlessly stay on the path without, without discouraged by individual sentient beings, their behaviors. You stay really much on the path. So that's the one thing is getting into the path, another is staying on the path. It's not so much, it's not only, it's sometimes it's very difficult to get on the path, but very easy to lose the path. So one is praying, may I reach the path of the Dharma? If you reach the path of Dharma, how do you know? Then you will see more delusions in your mind than you ever thought that you have. So, may I sweep away the delusion of the path? Yeah, instead of being overwhelmed, discouraged by the delusion, may you actually have this, have this amazing awareness that how much delusion we actually usually have. Only when we practice Dharma, we become, begin to see how deluded we are and then sweep away those things so that they do not pile up un, uncleansed. May, may delusion dawn as wisdom. Yeah, the fourth is when even delusion do not truly exist from its own side. Remember that. Otherwise, you might limp, lump yourself with delusion and becoming very miserable. A lot of people are like that. They don't see the emptiness of self, emptiness of delusion, emptiness of phenomena. They think the emptiness of... They think they are themselves are real, the problems are real, and people are real. They have so much grasping because they don't have wisdom. If you have wisdom, even the delusions do not truly exist. So you should not be intimidatable by, 
difficulties if you have the wisdom because difficulties are only a challenge for you before you see the right view so may the delusion dawn is wisdom yeah so that's uh, those four lines are very pro profound and if you if you have if you are able to see the delusion as wisdom you know then may bless me the irreligious thoughts is then you will always remain very religiously buddhist because otherwise they are so so called you know secular buddhists or people who don't want to really practice the dharma religiously they want to practice irreligiously i don't know whether that's allowable or not bless me to bless me the irreligious thought sees exactly such kind of a rebellious negative condescending thoughts does not gel with the practice of the dharma so may such irreligious thought sees you know believe in the buddha dharma sangha and you don't believe in them and you think the teaching is not working and people are not practicing dharma you get disappointed these are irreligious thoughts sentient beings are always like that so bless me the love and compassion grow yeah when sentient beings are difficult you instead of being angry and impatient you may be blessed to give rise to love and compassion uh, grow and grow means not just stay small and miserable but slowly become bigger and bigger and then previously you can only give loving kindness when people are nice to you now even when they're hard to you you develop loving kindness this is the kind of loving kindness growing you know even those people who who may not like you but you're now starting to show genuine concern for them because they shows that you have grown you are growing and therefore you are accommodating all sentient beings may i practice true bodhicitta that's like relative and ultimate bodhicitta you know and may i achieve buddhahood swiftly so those eight line verse prayers are very powerful succinct but very fundamental seminal prayers you do before the refuge object after you have done the refuge do the have done the refuge and supplication then the refuge object who's been listening to you all this time now they light shines forth from them and then lifting two veils two veils refer to the gross and subtle veil gross is afflictive and uh, afflictive and karmic obscurations and the subtle veil is cognitive obscuration these both of these two veils accumulate uh, are lifted by perfecting the two heaps heaps of merit and heaps of wisdom because if you have perfected heaps of merit and wisdom then you will realize two kayas beings mind is dharma kaya body is rainbow ripa kaya so they also attain two kayas by accumulating two heaps and by removing the two obscuration may they all reach buddhahood and divine realm so that's why with that saying then visualize all the light rays shine towards all sentient beings all of their true obscurations removed and they all become perfected with two kayas attend to uh two yeah two kayas and then otherwise their gross body to vanish into emptiness and you and everybody are also together vanish and there's no one who is or who isn't there's always a suspension of all things and let your mind rest at ease in that ultimate refuge as the the italic the paragraph and italic sex suggests that you should do that so that's the refuge after you've done the refuge very carefully you generate bodhicitta which is explicit saying i shall reach buddhahood to set free all beings from all, all uh, beings who have have been our mothers so you we should we should not only be grateful and indebted to this present life's mother but you should also recognize remember and assume that all beings have been sometime our kind and 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 grateful mother so you want to repay their kindness so with this in mind you need to rejoicingly uh, uh renew your bodhicitta that i'm going to do this uh, this avalokiteshvara sadhana mantra meditation for the benefit of all sentient beings so that's a quite a lengthy way of doing refuge in bodhicitta usually we do the short refuge in bodhicitta prayer we you know it doesn't matter the liturgy is short or long as long as you know how to stay very present and feel very 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 uh, blessed so that conclude the generation of bodhicitta and accumulation of merit 
so that's the preliminary. Now the main meditation uh, only happens uh, by doing uh, emptiness meditation. So it says, Om Swabhava Shudha Starva Dharma Swabhava Shudha Ahang, means all uh, phenomena are by nature pure, I too am by nature pure. With that sense of divine pride, you imagine yourself dissolving an emptiness. There's nothing whatsoever that is you or other. There's no self, no other. There's just incredible, indescribable state of Dharma Dhatu. And it says, from that vast, unbounded Dharma realm, that's Dharma Dhatu, from this very infinite pool of Dharma Dhatu, from the emptiness, all of a sudden springs a pre precious, willful, wish fulfilling throne, a lotus, and a mo uh, free from worldly faults, and a moon, just clear light essence. So that is represented relative bodhicitta, is the, moon, uh, the lotus flower, and the moon, ultimate bodhicitta is a moon disk. Um, and then on top of that, you instantly reappear. I, I, there I sit in Lord Chen Renzig's form. So here, Chen Renzig is a Tibetan translation, uh, Tibetan ep epithet of Avalokiteshvara. Chen means I, Re means torn apart, Zik means look. When he looks until his eye is torn apart, he will never say, I'm tired. He will just constantly, tirelessly look for the plight of sentient beings. All Buddhas in, embodied in one. So his embodiment of all Buddhas, his whole body is white color, crystal, uh, like a conch. And you have a very beautiful, kind, loving face, peaceful, and your true first pair of hands are in a folded and hard in prayer position. And the other pair holds a crystal rosary and a, in the right and the lotus flower in the left. So my legs are crossed in Vajra position, means your body, your legs are seated in diamond posture. Um, uh, fine silks and precious jewels are done. So you're covered in all the jewelries and uh, heavenly scarves and garments. My black hair is hipped on my head. So because Avalokiteshvara in Sambhogakaya form, his hair is long and tied up in a knot, rest hung beautifully. And then above my head, a crown is Amitabha. Uh, and uh, then he is an embodiment of all the Buddha's wisdom, foremost of our refuge. And uh, so to, and he's, he's not just like a statue. He's actually have a feeling and empathy towards yourself, looking, smiling upon you. And so your own body is, is by the reflection, really. It's, it looks like clear and vivid, but then when you look at it, it's not tangible. Not, not visible, not sorry, it's only visible, but it's not tangible, like an image, or like a, like a miraculous apparition of a phantom dancer, you know, like, and, but yet you are so beautiful, so awe-inspiring, and so pleasing, and so captivating, and such a holy presence. So with this in mind, you pause there for a little while, as, if, as you are the Avalokitesha seated in the middle of the space on a lotus and moon disk. And then on top of your, on the crown, you visualize Guru Amitabha uh, and then pray to him on behalf of all voiceless sentient beings who do not know how to begin and how to pray. Most sentient beings don't know how to pray because they, they're so deluded. So now you're praying on behalf of all sent, voiceless sentient beings to Guru Amitabha. What are you praying to? Uh, praying to my precious teacher, all refuge in one. So one to address in Guru Amitabha. Triumphant one means he has to conquer all the ex externally inner enemies, such as affliction and the wrong views. Uh, blessed Tathagata. Tathagata means that's gone. Uh, the fully enlightened Amitabha, the boundless one. Uh, take heed of me, please live with your living mind. So you are asking, you are actually paying heed to, asking him to pay heed to your solemn request. Free me from base acts, evil, and veils. So this is talking about ourself being completely nailed down by our own uh, kind of uh, uh, wrong views, you know. So that's why uh, one is requesting to purify our very fundamental negative karma habits. And so that uh, when maybe, if only we purify negative karma, evil acts, and uh, that evil refers to the... The evil refers to affliction, veils refers to cognitive obscurations. 
bless me to raise two heaps of merit. Exactly. Uh, then if you have removed those gross obscuration, then you will, you will be perfected with the accumulation of merit and wisdom. Uh, bless me the deepest meditation and sweetest passage of Buddhahood. Then we are repeating prayers so that we will be able to do such a deep meditation. So you say that verse, that two verses, three times each, supplicating. And after that, it's, then you meditate on the Mahamudra, nature of the great uh, seal. That's the nature of your mind. Of all samsara and nirvana, means everything in samsara and nirvana, from material to immaterial, from matter to consciousness, uh, uh, from samsara to nirvana, of all joy and sad, world means sadness and despair, mind is the cause of it. Mind is the root of all. So now you're meditating on the nature of your mind, isn't it? My, if that very mind was to examine, you know, it lacks any form or color or shape or anything. You could not see the mind in the ears or nose or mouth or hair or leg. Or, you couldn't see the mind uh, in the hair, in the leg, in the, you know, it is completely in, in, incredible. And, uh, and uh, so... Yet its essence is, is, is void. It's not one, not many. Uh, it's not something that is uh, born. It's not something that is, that is um, uh, yeah, uh, abiding. Uh, it's not something that is unceasing. It's exactly the opposite. So what is that? That is the luminosity. Clarity unchecked. Clarity means your own mind. That is so luminous, but no, nothing can check it. Nothing can arrest it. All functions still mean all activities of the mind are come to a stop and let the mind is tranquil in the great infinite. Great infinite mean rather, rather like great like the Dzogchen or Mahasandhi. It's a great vast infinity in which you meditate. So at this stage you sit sit there and enter into Mahamudra meditation, allowing the conscious awareness of the mind to be totally relaxed, but free from any effort, but let the mind to cease of any grasping at thoughts, images, you simply let it be. So that's the kind of Mahamudra meditation. That Mahamudra meditation is only not to be just maintained then, but throughout the rest of the month of recitation, you should recite, you should be in that state of emptiness meditation while reciting the mantra. Uh, and then, how do you recite the mantra? Om Mani Padme Hum. So it says, a lotus and moon disc in my heart. So you visualize in your heart a moon disc. On top of that, the syllable Hri. And that is surrounded by Om Mani Padme Hum. The sixfold mantra is, the Om is the white fold mantra. And the Ma is green fold mantra. And Ni is yellow fold mantra. And then, um, Om Mani, Pat is the, Pat is light green fold mantra, and the Me is the red fold mantra, Hung is dark blue. All of these six syllable mantras, light, they, they are sending rays of light, invokes the Buddha's mercy and compassion, and then it graces to bless all sentient beings. So you're the epicenter of the qualities of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, which is then going to distribute to sentient beings. So with this in mind, you should feel, you do, you know, you see, wholeheartedly marrows of the bones, and you visualize, you feel, for the sake of all sentient beings, the six different realms, Om Mani Padme Hum. And then you recite the Om Mani Padme Hum as many times as possible, as it says here. Then after that, you recite the Recite the long dharani. This ten, this long dharani mantra of Avalokiteshvara is inserted here, but it is actually not part of the four-armed Avalokiteshvara. This, this long Avalokiteshvara dharani is the this the eleven-faced, thousand-armed, thousand-eyed Avalokiteshvara mantra. So that mantra is there. And uh, since, uh, since it's a good idea to recite it there, at least three times each, it's a good to, so I've been asked to give the oral transmission of this mantra, which I'll do now. Namoro Nataya, Namariya Jana Sagara, Vero Jana Bhuyo Harajaya, Tatangataya, Arahati Samya, Sambodaya, 
Namazar wa da dan ga dembe ara ha dembe zam ya zam bo dembe namar ya wa lo ge di jora ya bo di za do ya ma za do ya ma ga re ni ga ta dia da on da ra da ra di re di re du ru du ru ya de wa re za la za la ba za la ba za la go zo me go zo wa re le me le zi den zo la ma ba na ya zo wa wa ta dia da am da ra da ra di re di re du ru du ru ya de wa re za la za la ba ra za la ba ra Kuzume kuzume varayle mele zidun zola ma vana ya zo va omane pa me hong. So in this way you recite the, uh, the omane pa me hong with or without the long darani. And you need to really recite this without any distraction, any dullness, any sort of doubt or any kind of wandering your mind elsewhere while mumbling the mantra. It doesn't work like that. Mantra recitation should be very, very free of any wrong conceptions. And wrong, wrong distractions, and 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 dullness, and laziness, and and doubt. With that in mind, you you should recite the mantra as many as you can, and try to feel and empathy, empathize the plight of sentient beings in the lower realms, and hungry girls, and animals, and humans, and so on. You recite that. Then, when you concluded that, you, when you want to conclude that, then you do the very quick dissolution. Throne and lotus upon which dissolve into light and absorb upon myself. So you, here it is. It you doesn't really dissolve yourself totally, uh, for some reason. But I don't think it matters if you wanted to visualize dissolving the four arms into two arms, and you um, you dissolve back into syllable on three, and vanish for a while, and you stay in that state of meditation, then reappear. And then post meditation in the form of Avalokitesh, one fires two harmed Avalokitesh, you dedicate the merits. So, in this way, you do the dedication of merits uh, of your practice um, uh, as it is very clearly stated in the text. By this merit, may all beings and I lead long and healthy lives and dharma. So, you pray for the long life of some people in your life. And be reborn in Sukhavati. May we be, if we die, which we, we will, will, may we not go in lower realms, but we find rebirth in Sukhavati. Sukhavati is opposite of Dukhavati. Sukha means bliss. Vati means land of, land of Sukha. Because all samsara is Dukhavati, land of Dukha. There is no end of Dukha. Uh, so here one is praying that uh, may all be reborn in the Sukhavati and swiftly attain Chenrezig's stage. So that's the ultimate request. Um, in the meantime, while we are on ordinary, on ordinarily in this samsara, like day to day, uh, may my body, voice, and speech, and mind will never part from his form, mantra, and wisdom. So that's a very powerful Vajrayana prayer. All the forms among the deities, all the mantras are speech, all the wisdom, so with this in mind, you try to guard your body, speech, and mind while adding beings and with my compassion. So you always use your, to remember compassion, how to be compassionate, how to speak compassionately, so for the sake of other sentient beings. Uh, while adding beings with my, may I fill the Bodhisattva's role? Yeah, if only if we can fill the role of Bodhisattva, take up the role of the Bodhisattvas, uh, so that if people criticize you, don't criticize them back. If people are angry at you, don't be angry at them. People speak harshly to you, against you, behind your back. You don't speak like that at all. You do the exact opposite. That is the Bodhisattva's role. Bodhisattvas should live uh, really, really selflessly and humbly and very patiently uh, and not think it's too much a trouble. You should think that's the nature of existence. That's the nature of what the, what the Bodhisattva needs to have to have to deal with it. So, in this life, and the next, and the bardo. So, there's a very special inclusion of this, next, and the bardo. May uh, Amitabha best guide holder. So, we visualize that in this life we are guided by Amitabha. Of course, at the time when we the next life also, like also in the bardo, may we guide by Amitabha to be, to be find a place in Sukhavati. And uh, with this compassion of hook. So, if you don't have the kind of a ring of faith, the compassionate hook will not get you. So you have to have a strong uh, you know, ring of faith, um, then the hook of compassion will guide us, shield us from samsara and nirvana's faults. 
Why is the fault of samsara nirvana? Samsara's fault is the existence. Nirvana's exist, uh, you know, fault is bliss because people become attached to their bliss. So attachment to bliss becomes the nirvana full of, uh, full of faults. Uh, so we call the nirvana with, uh, you know, um, nirvana that is that, that is tainted, that contaminated nirvana. And then by the merit of this uh, practice. By doing this, may I myself eventually reach the sweet, sweet, sweet stage of Avalokiteshvara, generalization, and lead unto this most sacred goal, all living beings. With, may we be able to guide every sentient being. Remember, the purpose of us generating Bodhicitta is so that we can guide sentient beings to other, li- to to the enlightenment. And so, with that, you do the dedication merit. So, the other three verses later are additional prayers about the Sakya lineage. Uh, which is okay to do. Uh, so otherwise, uh, uh, the 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 Abhiloka, the, sad, the sadhana itself is very easy. So that concludes the actual teaching on the uh, short teaching on the sadhana and practice. But main thing about sadhana is best is you learn to sit together and do the practice either on your own with a local group of sangha or with other practice groups. So I strongly uh, urge you all to uh, always have the lip on your lips the mantra om mani padme om mani padme om mani padme wherever you are you see things you hear things do not let the what those these those you think those you see those you hear to disturb your mind you just say om mani padme hum even not so so obviously in front of people but deep in your mind you always mum mumbling the mantra that will save you from reacting that will save you to control your thoughts control your emotions and even not experience adverse effect of other people's not so skillful uh, aggressive behavior because you see you just say money payment for them for you for disease for those in bardo so make a habit of making om mani padme hum be always on your lips even in dream you recite om mani padme hum that by saying this om mani padme hum these six syllable mantras are correspond to six realms of existence, six perfections, and uh, uprooting the six root afflictions, and so on. So this has got a lot of meaning by reciting Om Mani Padme. Om means homage, Mani means jewel, uh, Padme means in the lotus, Hung means so be it. So, so literal prayer is mainly paying homage to the uh, to the to the jewel in the lotus of course we jewel what jewel is the bodhicitta lotus is the relative loving kindness and compassion and bodhicitta what not so with this in mind we um, after having received the empowerment of uh, this uh, four arm rabalokateshra some people say even the people have people who are born in tibet and tibetan buddhist family they don't need oral transmission or money payment because they they will have always heard it many times, uh, so that's why people say that Om Mani Padme Hum is the most quintessence of the Buddha Dharma. Even meditation on on breath or other forms of conventional meditation, uh, if you kind of do it, don't worry. Just recite Om Mani Padme Hum, maybe a couple of rounds, maybe half an hour. Sit down, recite the mantra. It will just have a profound cleansing and purificatory effect to you, your consciousness, those around you. So that's why it is good idea, as recommended uh, from today onwards, that people can write them, recite the mantras, uh, recite the mantras, and keep a good record. Uh, submit that to the Sakya friends, so that we, in the end, will be able to offer send it to His Holiness Sakya Kungma Trichin, saying that we have been engaging in these wholesome deeds. In, in order to request him to live long and fulfill his noble wishes. And uh, so this kind of collective merit, doing merit throughout the next few months will have a profound change and blessing to all of you. So that's why giving of this empowerment and with this uh, short explanation to you, um, uh, uh, may it be uh, beneficial for you to to, to find a, a great way to use uh, and remember the Om Mani Padme Hum. This Om Mani Padme Hum in Tibetan Buddhism, carved on rocks, they're printed in prayers like this, and they always do the prayer wheels. 
So not only they recite the mantra uh, verbally, but they also visualize the heart chakra, the, ma the, ma the loving kindness, compassion, energy is radiating. And then if you have prayer, 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 ma prayer wheels like this, uh, you know, they already are made, you know, so make sure the prayer wheels are filled with mantras, because sometimes the tourists, some people in the tourists, they sell <laughs> prayer wheels without, without any prayer in them. So, and it's possible that prayer wheels should also be consecrated. And each time you, uh, you say that you should put the prayer wheel on top of your head, and then use it while reciting mantra as a meditation. And once you finish, you put it back with put your head, and also, uh, so the pr because prayer is, we're trying to we trying to saturate the oxygen with these prayers. So whoever breathe the prayers, breathe the air, will receive the blood. Because we are, we are a lot of prayers are are sent into the into the air and the wind and so on, wind and water. So that every sentient being who are resorting to these four ele five elements may their consciousness be blessed. Even when you see someone. Who some wild creatures dead on the road always say Om Mani Padme a few times, breathe out into the ears. It will bless their consciousness. And even if some some difficult things things are said or done, you just say Om Mani Padme Hum and don't try to react and overreact to that. Try to use it as a restrainer for yourself from saying, doing, and thinking that is anti Dharma or that is not contra not uh, not not uh, in according to the Dharma. So use the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum as a way to control your thoughts and feelings and emo emotions from reacting and from overreacting, seeing all things are, have compassion towards sentient beings who didn't know what they were doing, who didn't want to do that, only if they knew they were doing that to get that effect. And so feel they are just like blind, not knowing where to go, and they're walking, in the walking into the cliff. Likewise, all sentient beings always falling into the cliff because they are blinded by the. Uh, they are so angry. They are so mean. They are so s selfish. And Om Mani Padme Hum. You just wish them to be saved from their such anger and righteousness, or such jealousy, or such re vengeance. So you should always make a habit of remembering Om Mani Padme Hum to bless your mental consciousness and auditory, visual consciousness. So they always look uh, uh, with the look with the eyes of compassion, listen with the ears of tolerance, and uh, and understand with the mind of great wisdom of Mahamudra. So in this way, you can use the Om Mani Padme Hum um, to in form of uh, meditation, and uh, even some just reciting Om Mani Padme Hum much better than the people who are doing one uh, calm body meditation without any focus. Uh, without any concentration or just focusing on the sensation of the breath or something. It, the Vajrayana Mantra Restation can be greatly boost and uh, boost and validate your actual other prayer meditation. So with this we have concluded the short commentary on the, uh, the sadhana of the uh, Mahakaruna and Mahamudra combined uh, practice of these together. So if you can all participate, whatever time permits for you to just uh, give a good formal half an hour, hour each day, recite the mantra, and, and then dedicate for for the long life fulfillment the wishes <coughs> of our gurus, particularly His Holiness Sakya Kongma Trichan and others, and of course His Holiness Dalai Lama. All this will be very beneficial things for you to do, and it will also help you to control your thoughts, feelings, emotions and therefore help to re, uh, help to recognize them with a much more wisdom and insight. Uh, so with this we have now concluded the teachings and uh, here we are going to do the uh, dedication of merits. Uh, thank you very much everyone for <clears throat> giving your time and energy. May you all uh, never forget Om Mani Padme Hum. Never forget the the virtue of remembering the mantra, reciting the mantra, or even possessing a carved mantra stone or something in your possession, and always uh, um, you know uh, say the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum when somebody's sad, somebody angry, 
somebody is really difficult, just just don't react and overreact with anything, but just say out of compassion, Om Mani Padme Hum, murmur them, whisper them in your heart. You wouldn't believe how quickly it saved your reaction, and saved you from childishness, and don't mind what other saints, childish like Saint Jimmy say or do, because you have compassion to shield yourself from harm by their negativities. So therefore, instead of being harmed by other people's wrongdoing, you're armed by your compassion, so that the, their wrongdoing is transformed into me, into the quality of your boost of the practice. So, um, uh, so if I haven't forgotten anything to mention, but otherwise that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, the Om Mani Hung is a very sacred practice. And it's only sacred if you did it, uh, only sacred if you received the empowerment and then you did it. And so um, all of you have been very diligent uh, tonight with staying up late and dis receiving this empowerment. I'm sure you all deserve to have discover the compassionate way of living and thinking and talking uh, in your everyday life. It will never. He saw the Dalai Lama as my religion's kindness. You know, that's very important. So that even Avalokitesha is a, is, a, is a reminder to practice kindness. Uh, it's not so much to have a deity if you take the empowerment. You, you take the empowerment so that you have a deity with which helps you to remember compassion. Uh, so, so that you don't resort to aggression with aggression, retaliation with provocation, and bad words with bad words. You are trying to make sure that you you do not resort to such things, but instead you you restrain your body, speech, mind by remembering Om Mani Padme Hum and by saying it, by reading it, by have care, wearing mala on your neck, wrist or having a little door locket that you wear on, a, on your heart that represents that all the quintessential teachings of Buddha Dharma is most blessed gift. So um, there have been enormous merit and uh, from your right effort in and making this session, the company giving you and everyone is a commendable one. So we'll, with this in mind, we'll now do the dedication of merits uh, of this session. Uh, thank you, everyone. Can we screen share the dedication of merits? Yeah.